Good morning. Um, it is uh, my great pleasure to be able to sit down and share with you a little bit about how I have a quiet time, how I have a daily, take daily a time away to talk with the Lord and to hear from Him. There's a little bit of strategy, there's tools that I use, there's a time and a, a place that I do have my quiet time. So I'm going to share all of those things with you and uh, we'll get going. So welcome and thank you for watching. Uh, today, uh, this is my place. This right here is where I sit every morning, usually from about 6 in the morning till about 8. But if you can just carve out a little bit of time to spend with the Lord, it does need to be quiet and uh, it should be private. Um, this is just a time for you and the Lord. Um, I like to think of it like a date with my husband. I want to be alone with my husband. I don't want to share him with anybody, and um, I want his full attention, and I want him to have my full attention. And so I try to take all distractions out of the way, and I do that um, just by getting alone. And here is where I sit every morning. I have things on my refrigerator that remind me of uh, to be joyful or to be thankful and grateful. I have... Bible verses um, that the Lord, I felt, was speaking to me, posted here where I can see. I've got lists of people that I pray for, and um, this is where it happens every, every day. So I have a place, and you need to find a place that you can go away and that you can be by yourself with the Lord. So first of all is find a place. Find a time. Time is really important. Now, um, I've been, uh, I've known the Lord for about 35 years, and every season of my life really kind of dictates when my quiet times happen. Um, in college, it would have to happen midday. And uh, when I had itty bitties, actually my quiet time happened all day long because I would just leave my Bible open and I would you know, get up and change a diaper and come back. I'd put on a video and come back, and, and it, the Lord just kind of rolled with that. And um, when the kids started school, um, I'd put them on the bus, and then I would sit down. That was the time before the day got started. And um, now that Grandpa lives with us, I have to uh, get those before he gets up. He gets up at 8, so it's have it before 8 or um, have it during nap time when he goes down for a nap. So that's when um, I'm having, when I can have my quiet time. I cannot function at night, so I do not have my quiet times at night. My brain starts clicking off, and I really not verbal anymore <laughs> by that time. So um, I don't have my quiet time in the evening, and, um, and I don't, Jim and I don't really have date times at night because we're both really so tired. So that's not an optimal time for me to have, um, to be at my best for the Lord. And um, so those are when I have time, and I have my quiet times. And uh, the next thing that you need to have a good quiet time with, um, with God is the Bible. That is the one tool that you must have. The Bible, either a hard copy or on your phone. And because um, you want to you wanna get to know the God of the Bible. Not um, the God that other people talk about, but the God as he reveals himself here. So um, what is our goal while we're having a quiet time? It's to love God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength. It's to know him, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has set. Said. So how, how do we do that? We open up the word of God and we look to see how he has revealed himself. Because we have all kinds of ideas of what we think God may be like, but when he reveals himself, he's gonna show you what he is like, how he interacts with God, with man, and um, he will show himself as, as he is, both the, the judge of men and also the lover of mankind. So he's gonna show you what he's like. He wants you to know him. He has invited us to have relationship with him. And so we must spend time if we wanna love him better. Um, so you're gonna, you need your Bible. 
I uh, have a I have a journal that I write down um, Bible verses or things about God that I hadn't that he shows me in in the word you need a Bible you need a pen and pencil uh, you will need a clock the clock is so that you won't lose track of time I I could spend hours sitting in this spot doing this um, and a lot of times you got a job to get to or you, you've got things appointments and and uh, kids are going to be getting up so you want to have a clock that you can see I can see my clock my stove clock from here so I don't usually need a, a clock in this area you need um, you might need a devotional I I really enjoy um, looking at this this one's my favorite one this is the one I'm currently using this year it's the daily light and it's only scripture so it goes by the day and I read you know today is May 14th um, 2020 so I read May 14th and and um, read the scriptures and respond when I read um, you want to open up your heart and your mind to what God's gonna show you so a devotional um, I also have a, actually a one devotional that we do as a church is the spiritual disciplines and I follow along every week with uh, Jim and our spiritual disciplines so today we were in 1 Samuel 3 and 7 and praying for our neighborhood and our world um, the people in our neighborhood and world so um, that is also this is considered like a Devo um, that you would do but that's the strategy that's what you're gonna follow along with so that you keeps you keeps you going um, in a and um, um, I guess you would call it um, so that you're not kind of flipping around all the time just doing whatever comes to mind but you you've got a, a, stool, a tool and a strategy to keep going um, forward and and in our case we're all the churches together and so I follow I follow along with um, Jim because I know he's going to be preaching on this these topics on Sunday and um, then it keeps me from getting all really scattered so um, a calendar spiritual disciplines uh, phone many of you are on your phones I don't have my Bible on my phone because I like a hard copy but make sure you turn it to silent okay turn it off um, you don't want to be interrupted this is just your time with God and let me tell you the minute you try to sit down and have a quiet time with the Lord phones gonna start ringing the kids are gonna come in I, it's just crazy how the enemy will use that time so turn your phone off um, so you won't be interrupted um, and lastly uh, if you respond uh, you might need Kleenex um, I was balling this morning so make sure you have like a little Kleenex that way you're not having to hop up and down um, every few minutes to just uh, stop your tears <laughs> uh, so let's I'm gonna just take about 10 minutes to kind of share with what I learned this morning um, in my quiet time uh, remember the goal is to love God to relate to God to hear from him and then to respond back with a heart affection towards the Lord so um, I wanted to start off with one of my favorite verses Psalm uh, 43 verse 8 says um, let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love for in you I trust make me know the way I should go for to you I lift up my soul many times we need help during the day for the day that's coming up we maybe you sit down and you've just got overwhelming needs and concerns that are on your heart the Lord invites you to pour out your soul this is your time to pour out and to receive from him we're weak we need him we need his comfort we need his wisdom we need um, his his uh, help for strength for joy for patience for self-control so that we hold our tongues when we want to go ah! um, at someone or things that are in our lives so we need him and I find most of all that I need to he hear him remind me how much he loves me just like when I'm with 
on my date with my husband. I want my husband to tell me he loves me. He enjoys me. And I want to hear God say the exact same thing. So that is one of my favorite verses. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning. For in you I trust. And make me know the way I should go. For to you I lift up my soul. Uh, now today... We were in First Samuel, and um, and I usually start. I just say, "Lord, good morning. I'm so glad that I'm here, and I love you. Uh, would you speak to me this morning? I'm quieting my heart before you, and I'm waiting on you. And I, if I have something that's bothering me, I'll share about that. Or um, sometimes I just wake up and I'm just quiet. I'm ready to hear from Him first thing." And so I come and I wait, and he tells me, he talks to me. And I assume that when I open the word of God, that he is speaking to me. That is an automatic given. I ask him to reveal his word um, to me as I'm, and I assume that wherever we are in the devotion or in a spiritual discipline or in a Bible study, if you're doing a Bible study, I assume that God has something to say to me that day. Okay, so today, what did God say? Where is the Lord calling Samuel? Samuel is a small boy, and he is living in the tabernacle um, with Eli the priest. And um, I was reminded, I've read this story many times, I was reminded that Samuel slept where the ark of God was, was right in the presence of God. And I thought, wow. Here's some of my responses to the Lord. What must it be like, Lord, to sit in your presence all the time? To be in your presence all the time? And then I thought, wait a minute. I am in the presence of the Lord all the time. And so right then I was like, thank you, God, that I'm in your presence, that you live in me and I am in your presence all the time. So there is an immediate application to something that I read, a, a heart response to something that I read. And God reminded me, He's always, I'm always in his presence. Um, then I read here, I read, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Because um, he was hearing Samuel, Samuel, and he would jump up and he would go to Eli and say, Here I am. And he was like, Nope, go back to bed. But God was calling him. But Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of God had not been revealed to him. I remember when I did not yet know the Lord and before the word of God was revealed to me, it was a lonely time. And I'm ever grateful that the Lord saved me through Jesus Christ and called me, called me by name. He knows my name. He knows your name. And he calls us and he can call us as a little boy as he did Samuel, or he can call you as adult. It doesn't matter when, as long as he calls you. And we say, here I am, here I am. And I was also reminded, this is a verse that I can pray for my kids. I can pray for my, my, um, my family. I can pray for my neighbors, because today we're praying for our neighbors. I could pray that the Lord would reveal himself, that he would call them and that they would know him. So that was one of my application points as I was reading. Um, another one was that Eli is about to get in trouble. And the Lord's going to speak his word through Samuel as an itty-bitty little boy prophet. And he's going to tell him what's going to happen to Eli. And, and this was a little, you know, God tells us that he loves us and he also wants to warn us. And for me, that it was a little bit, um, I've read this before and I'm always struck by this. It says, um, declare, he said, uh, verse 13, declare to him that what I'm about to, I'm about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his boys were blas his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. I don't know about y'all, but I was like, wow, our God does punish, you know, for sin. He does hear, he, he, he wants us to be serious about our sin. That was my op application point is, you know, as I'm raising my children and have, you know, half of them are out and half of them are still in that, um, in my, still in my home, that I would be serious about calling my kids to right living, to know God, to walk with him, to not blaspheme God. And it, that's part of my, this part of my job to do that. 
And so I got to teach them about God. And, and uh, to me, that was just a really serious moment for me to read this. And I thought, Lord, may we never, this was my application. As I'm reading this, God saying, Kim, pay attention. Know what's going on in your home. Pay, uh, you know, don't allow your kids to blaspheme me. And I thought, Lord, my heart, I never want to have me or my children blaspheme you. Would you guard us? And that became a point of, of praying and, and worshiping the Lord and asking him to guard me and my family and, and my neighbors. May they know you. May they come to know you um, so that they don't blaspheme you. Lord, they need Jesus. And I pray for my, my neighbors um, by name, all the ones that I, can, that I know, and pray for them. So um, though that's just a quick little look at how I... I read the word and then I respond. I pray. Praying is just talking with God. It's, you don't need any special words. You can um, share your heart. That's what God wants. God wants you pouring out your heart. So if you're stuttering or mumbling or whatever, he knows. He knows. He sees your heart. He knows your heart and he, he wants it. He wants to live in that place and relationship and fellowship with you. And every morning you get the opportunity or every afternoon or in the evening. If you're a spark in the evening, that's when you should guard that time for God, is go in the evening when you're just ready to go and then lay lay your um, your heart before him right before you go to bed. It doesn't matter when you do it, just as long as you do it, right? So uh, the last little thing that I wanted to share was uh, an end. Uh, I was reading through Lamentations 3, and um, and I thought this would be an appropriate verse to close in. It says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him. This is verse 25. To the soul who seeks him, as you and I are seeking him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Um that was the end of it. Sorry, I meant to start at 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that we have the opportunity to wait for you. You are our salvation, and you come and you speak to us, and your words are precious. We love you, Lord, and we want to know you better. Would you help us to have regular quiet times with you, to grow, and to love you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength? And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful. God bless you.